Hey guys, welcome back to Predicta Restoration Techniques, the 17-inch series. When we last uh, left off, we talked about disassembling the set. Now I want to talk about what all these components are. What are we looking at? All right, let's start with the tuner. So that when you're looking at the back of the set, is located on the far left. There are two styles. This is a debutante chassis. They use a smaller tuner. Or at least the later production versions do, with two tubes kind of coming out of the side. This is what the earlier or more common uh, tuner looks like. This is what you find in a Princess, a Siesta, and I think the early debutante models, the two tubes are facing up. These do not use the same tubes. So pay attention, look at the tube chart inside the uh, set. If you have a debutante, with an 11L43 chassis. Unfortunately, there's no service info. And if you get the SAMs for the Princess, which is a very similar chassis, it uses different tubes in the tuner. Check the tube chart inside the cabinet. Make sure you're putting the right type of tubes in there. Otherwise, the hookup uh, looks very similar. Tuner has two tubes. One is an RF amp. Amplifies the incoming signal, which comes in through these twin leads. The other is a local oscillator mixer tube. The output of this will be the intermediate frequency which is 45 megahertz. That's what this coax is. It plugs in with an RCA plug on top of the tuner. Pull that out to separate the two. There's a pilot light on them. They are often burned out because, well, it's nearly impossible to get at them without pulling the whole set apart, so they often didn't get replaced once they burned out. It's a type number 47 bulb, super common 6.3 volt AC bulb. I've been replacing them with LED equivalents. Yeah, the color spectrum's a little bit different, they're a little bit brighter, but they will last a lot longer, and given how difficult they are to get at, I suggest you go with the longest lasting replacement you can get. If you want to stay with incandescent, get a type 1847. They are longer life versions of a number 47 bulb. The other cable going to it uh, carries filament supply for the tubes, B plus supply, and the AGC voltage. There's one capacitor on the tuner, that is the AGC cap. Don't forget to replace it, it's easy to overlook. Now this is a restored chassis, so I don't want to talk in any detail about this stuff because it'll just confuse you if you're looking at an unrestored one instead. Let's continue on with what attaches to it. We have a control cluster, three potentiometers, brightness, vertical hold, horizontal hold. We have the power switch assembly. Push on, push off, rotate for volume, rotate the outer knob for contrast. We have an AC interlock located near the power transformer. That's where your AC comes in, non-polarized. The yoke plugs in on the back of the high voltage box. That's what we disconnected earlier when we took the CRT out. And that, of course, is the CRT head assembly. With all the cables coming out down below. The CRT electron gun plugs in here, that'll have your filament supply and bias voltage and focus for the picture tube. Video signal for the picture tube plugs in right here. It says video out on the circuit board. Speaker. The speaker plugs directly into the audio output transformer. There are lugs right on that transformer. Be careful. Don't pull or tug on these or you could rip these lugs out of the output transformer. Now I've pulled out a mostly unrestored 10L43 chassis. This is what you will encounter in a Princess, a Siesta, a Continental, or an early debutante before they switch to the 11L43. Alright, continuing on, the tuner we talked about earlier. Here's the RCA coax that would plug into the output of the tuner. So that's the later style. Here is the earlier, far more common style. 
And if you have the UHF option, there will be a copper plated box attached to the top and sticking out the side, something like so. And this will down convert it from the UHF frequencies to VHF and then it will flow through this tuner and into the rest of the set. Those are somewhat uncommon, but uh, I believe every model did have a UHF option. Alright, so, so the output of the tuner, 45 MHz IF, goes into this box. This is your IF module. Three tubes, two IF and one uh, combination detector output tube. This will down convert it. The output of this is your composite video sync with uh, FM sound and that goes on to the main board through a single wire coming out of the board uh, this board down here these are pretty darn reliable there are no paper caps in this you don't have to open this up it's quite likely your set will work fine I often do for a few reasons one these are often very corroded I, I like to take the shield off and remove the corrosion uh, I also find it's easier to work on the power supply components back here with this out of the way. I've spot checked a bunch of the resistors on this board, which are carbon composition, and often they've drifted up in value. So I figure while I'm overhauling the whole set, I might as well. But uh, if you don't feel comfortable, you, you don't want to mess with it, you don't have to. Your set will probably work fine without you touching it at all. Located directly behind it, we have this socket here. That is where a fusible resistor plugs in. The originals, well, I've seen a lot of different styles over the years. Uh, looks something like this, a big cement coated thing. Uh, sometimes the guys, I've seen like a 14 gauge piece of wire jammed in there. <laughs> uh, you want it, we'll talk about what to replace that with later. It's good to have it there. It helps protect the power transformer and other components if something were to go bad. All right, behind that is the power transformer. There is an AC interlock uh, next to that that has a line filter cap right on it. It's hard to get at. It's easy to overlook. It's a paper cap directly across the AC line. Even when the set's turned off, power is across it. The set's been sitting a long time and that cap's deteriorated. You go to plug it in, it's very likely to pop on you. You want to replace that. It's tough to get at, don't forget about it. We have an electrolytic here. We have another one here. This forms part of the voltage doubler. The case does not go to ground. That's why it's covered in cardboard. It's mounted separately. We have two wires going to it. There's AC uh, going to this. Uh, don't make a mistake and attach them. Just assume the negatives on all the electrolytics go to ground. They do on all the caps, but not this one. Two diodes down in here work with this cap and one section on this to form a voltage doubler. That is the filter choke for the B-plus supply. Inside this, we have our flyback transformer that makes a high voltage and drives a horizontal yoke windings and generates a B plus voltage as well. The tube that uh, powers that uh, flyback. 6DQ6 plugs in here and that is the plate cap. Be careful with that. You don't want to break it. These tend, the wire tends to get brittle with age. And in front of that goes the damper tube. Both of those hook up to stuff inside of this box and make that high voltage. We have a little terminal strip here with a power resistor and depending on the revision you may have a capacitor here. There's our audio output transformer we talked about earlier and here is the other main electrolytic four section. A bunch of stuff go into that. That's a three section electrolytic, one section electrolytic, four section electrolytic, which makes a grand total of eight electrolytic capacitors in this set. That is the vertical output transformer that drives the vertical yoke windings. Horizontal yoke windings, vertical yoke windings. 
which leaves our main board that has the bulk of the components and activity going on it. So we have the output of our F board going to it. This would be the uh, video amp tube. The output of this drives, uh, I believe it's the cathode on the picture tube. And then there's a pickoff coil tuned to 4.5 megahertz that picks the sound component off. That goes into this tube, into this tube, into this tube. These three tubes form your sound IF and audio output. This tube 6DR7, that is your vertical oscillator and vertical output tube. It's just all in one and the components around it are all part of the vertical circuitry and then vertical output transformer. So it, it makes sense that the, the signal path flows through this way. Horizontal, vertical, sound, video. Back in here is more of the horizontal circuitry. The horizontal oscillator tube uh, would normally be sitting right here. I scavenged the socket already. Uh, these couplets, this coil, the dual selenium rectifier that would be in here for AFC. This all forms the horizontal oscillator. A couple controls here on the back. One is the coarse horizontal oscillator frequency control. The other is a vertical height control. There is a switch here that goes into the AGC circuit, local distance switch that controls the amount of gain in the video IF. I think that covers everything. It's transformer, so that is your um, 4.5 megahertz uh, notch pickoff coil, your sound IF, and then a quadrature FM detector for your audio. You rarely need to adjust those, but if you do have some buzz, this would be the one to tweak. Or if it's really weak audio, you may tweak that. There's a core at the top and at the bottom. Don't adjust any of these coils if you don't absolutely have to and you know that that's what the problem is. You're just asking for trouble. Then, of course, we have our picture tube with... Uh, all the cables going up through the bottom we've already talked about. That, uh, that covers everything, I think. Hope that uh, gives you a little more insight into what exactly you are looking at here. If you haven't worked on one of these before, it can seem very confusing, very overwhelming. There's wires all over the place, parts all over the place, but it all breaks down into logical suctions. Tuner, IF, power supply, high voltage supply horizontal circuitry, video circuitry, audio circuitry, vertical circuitry. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.